There are different types of data that you can use to build phylogenetic trees. Uh, you can use uh, characteristics of species. That was what was done actually before, uh, uh, before we had the molecular biology, we have DNA data. Uh, you can use uh, characteristics like traits, li uh, which may be continuous or discrete, like examples of discrete traits. For example, this species has wings. This species does not have wings. Okay, so or it can, uh, it, it's, it lives in uh, under sea. It cannot live under sea. These are binary traits, and we can also have biomolecular features like certain functions. Uh, uh, certain cellular functions being present or absent in these species. And if we concatenate, if we combine all these characteristics together, what we have is called a character state matrix. In other words, uh, for a species, uh, we can have the character vector. We can have several characters. And for a species S, we can say, okay, this character is present, missing, present, present, present. So we can have for the species 1, we can have a character state vector. For species 2, we can have another character state vector. And we can have a number of species that have these characters, which is going to build up your character state matrix. There are uh, methods that use such character state matrices and build phylogenetic trees out of that. There are also, but in this uh, course, in this class, we are going to uh, see, uh, we are going to use numerical distance matrices. We are not going to process such character state matrices. We are going to assume that some uh, other process gives us numerical values, a single numerical scalar value between two species. How similar they are, or which shows, if it, in the case of a distance matrix, it shows the value shows how distant they are. Okay, so a character state matrix uh, is like this. Uh, now, I'm going to also skip different kinds of trees. As I, I already mentioned, there are rooted trees, unrooted trees. There are also uh, trees in which the branch lengths are, uh, mean, branch lengths mean something. Uh, so here, uh, this is an unrooted tree that can be rooted by putting some root node here. We can also use a midpoint distance uh, between all uh, entries to place a root somewhere. But in general, uh, most the UPGMA method, for example, uh, is going to produce a rooted tree. So here's an example of an unrooted tree. And as you can see, we have some a uh, legend here that shows that this distance means 0 0.02 million years, for example. Uh, so it shows the, uh, the distance, the branch length in this tree uh, means uh, evolutionary distance in terms of million years. Uh, here is a rooted tree. The root is uh, here, the hypothetical ancestral species. Uh, again, the branch length uh, again means something. Here is another larger tree unrooted and uh, with branch lengths. Uh, if we have character state matrices, there are methods like maximum parsimony or maximum likelihood methods that can process such matrices and build phylogenetic trees. Uh, today we are going to see the UPGMA technique, which is a distance-based method, meaning that it doesn't take a matrix like this. It takes a distance matrix, which shows pairwise distances between each species. And we can now uh, discuss how we can actually get such uh, values. For example, imagine you have four species or five species, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. Distance-based methods use a distance matrix, which is a square matrix. The diagonal is 0. The distance of a species with itself is zero. Okay, and it's a symmetric matrix, meaning that the distance between S1 and S2 is equal to the distance between S2 and S1. It's symmetric, so we can fill in one part, one half of this matrix. And this distance can be found by using, for example, pairwise sequence alignment techniques. By using pairwise sequence alignment, you can find uh, 
uh, sequence similarity, a, an alignment, and from that alignment, you can use the inverse of the similarity score as a distance. And actually, using the same dynamic programming technique, instead of computing a, a alignment score, you can also compute an edit distance between two, two strings. Edit distance is the number of operations, insertions, deletions, or mutations, that are required to convert one sequence to another. So it's uh, the, the idea of instead of having the uh, score of an alignment, the similarity score, we, have, we can have the notion of distance. They're just inverse uh, notion, uh, concepts. I mean, uh, high, highly similar sequences have smaller distances between them. Okay, well, distant sequences have uh, smaller scores. Uh, so we can use, we can build such a matrix using any of the previous uh, tool uh, alignment uh, techniques we have found. We can use local alignment to find and use the uh, score of the local alignment. We can convert it to a distance score uh, by using just taking the inverse of it or by subtracting it from such from um, from a maximum score for example we can convert sequence similarity values to distances and it doesn't matter actually in these algorithms whether you have distances or similarities okay we can have uh, we can just simply say these distance based methods we can also say them uh, they are similarity based methods okay the only thing in the algorithm that is going to change is instead of picking the minimum distance element just pick the maximum similarity element, okay? Instead of picking the maximum, ent uh, the minimum entry here in the distance matrix is going to correspond to the maximum entry in a similarity version of the same matrix, okay? Similarity and distance, they're just the uh, same, uh, but inverse, uh, I mean, they, they indicate similar things, just uh, in an in inverse way. But what these methods, distance-based methods, the main requirement of these methods is that we need to know for all pairs of sequences, we need to know how they are related pairwise, okay? Meaning that, what is the distance between S2 and S5? What is the distance between S2 and S4? I need to have this full matrix. In other words, if I have five species, I have to, I need to look at uh, n square. If I have n species, I need to have n square, order of n square, uh, pairwise relationship, relationship between these sequences in order to run, uh, in order to apply these uh, distance-based methods. So this matrix is an input to these neighbor joining NJ and UPGMA techniques. First, we need to have such a matrix. And if th these methods take this matrix as an input, pairwise relationships are taken as an input, and it builds a phylogenetic tree representing the global picture about these relationships. This matrix here, the pairwise relationships are just the local relationships. Take two species, okay, these species are like this. Take another two species, these species are as close like this. Now, phylogenetic tree analysis techniques helps us to uh, pro provide a global view, okay? Okay, these are the pairwise relationships. If you consider all of them, how are they all related to each other? Okay, that's the uh, thing that phylogenetic tree provides us. It provides us put all the species on the table and show, uh, give us a global picture of their relationships. Now, uh, uh, this distance matrix uh, methods, so we, are, we need a pairwise distance matrix D uh, and they produce a tree uh, and here, this is a, like actually an optimization problem. It's like this. If uh, the actual problem here, so we have these pairwise distances, uh, our goal is you can generate many trees, okay? You can generate many different trees for these species. So the question is, which tree is going to be a better tree? So what, what do you mean constructing a tree? And which tree is actually, if, if I give you two trees, Okay, of these species. For example, if I give you this, this distance matrix, if it was like this, one, two, two, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, so this belongs to here, okay, three, one, and 
five, for example. If I give you this distance matrix, and if I give you two trees like this, I'm just, I'm not, uh, I'm just building them arbitrarily. Okay, this is one three, and this is another three. Okay, actually this branch is <laughs> not needed. So this is another three. Now, uh, you can generate many trees, okay, out of these actually. How many trees do you generate? Uh, it could be a good exercise. Uh, if, if I have five species, how many different trees can be generated uh, using these five? Uh, in other words, it's like they're, they're all binary trees, as you can see. Uh, the, they don't necessarily, a phylogenetic tree does not necessarily be a binary tree, meaning that at each branch we have two uh, children, but the UPGMA and neighbor joining by uh, construction, they build binary trees. So if we restrict ourselves to binary trees, the question is, how many different binary trees can you have which have five leaves? Okay, if I have five leaves, uh, which correspond to the, these species, the, all, the, the common thing between these trees is that uh, they have all uh, five leaves. How many different trees can you uh, construct uh, with five leaves? How many binary uh, trees can you, can you have? Any suggestions? Hmm. Uh, but also, at each level, we can have. I mean, we can have a balanced tree, uh, meaning that. Okay. Okay, I see. At the. Uh, okay. I. So, okay. Okay. That, that, that's that's very good. So it's like. Uh, five choose two, uh, at the. At the leaf level. Uh, I'm going to combine these and then times four choose two, something like this, I guess. Uh, is, it, is it like this? Because after you combine these two, you are going to get have four elements at the next level. You are going to choose two from these four elements. These are the possible ways you can choose two elements. And then you are going to have three elements at the next step. These are the steps you are going to have. And at the end, you are going to have two elements, which is one. Uh, for a, so it's uh, going to be like this. So if you have, in general, if you have n species, it's going to be n choose two times n choose uh, n minus one choose two times n minus two choose two, and then two choose two. Okay, these are the number of trees uh, that you can have if you are using the UPGM or neighbor joining technique, which means that at each level we are going to uh, choose two species and combine them. At the next level, for example, we have choose these two, but after we have chosen these two, we have four options. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Which, which of these two are we going to choose from? So we can have this many trees. So if you work out the math, is this number, what is the order in terms of order of n? This is order of n square. Uh, is this also n square? So it's, is it, so it's going to be like on cube, I guess, right? We are going to have n of these. I think it should be some, uh, my guess is it's going to be like, or, or maybe since you're, you're decreasing by, Maybe n log n, uh, n square log n. I don't know, but I, I think it, it's 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 cl I think it's close to n cube. Uh, different uh, trees we are going to have. 
So we are going to have uh, this many trees. Uh, in other words, let's come to my first question. If, uh, even if, I have, if somebody gives you two different trees, uh, which tree better represents this matrix? Okay, that's the question. Okay, which we, if I give you these two, whether the choice of, uh, for example, choosing, uh, combining the result of S1, S2 with S3, is it a better choice than combining S3 and S4? So, uh, which tree is a better tree? Uh, and in other words, which tree represents better the pairwise relationships? And actually, this can be formulated as an optimization problem like this. If in these uh, branches, we, I also assume uh, if, if we have branch lengths, it's going to, the number of trees are going to be much larger. If, if we, we get branch lengths into picture, you can have infinitely many different trees because the branch lengths can be any integer or any real number you, uh, can be the branch length. In other words, uh, let's, let's imagine we have uh, some numbers on these branches which shows again the distances. So the trees uh, have, a tree, uh, these branches have lengths. Okay? Now the optimization problem is this. By looking at this tree, you can actually uh, compute the path distance. The, what, for example, what is the distance between S5 and S1 in this tree? But if, since it's a tree, there is a unique path between S5 and S1, which is this. Okay? And if you sum up the edge lengths on this path, you are going to get yourself a distance. Now, the optimization problem is this. And also actually, it's a, the first one is a decision problem, which says that can you draw a tree in which if you compute the path lengths, for each pairs of these sequences, those path lengths will be exactly same as the pairwise distances in this tree. Okay, so it's uh, it's like a it's like a puzzle. Okay, I I've, I've, I've given you pairwise distances. You are going to put all of them. Uh, you can also think of it like a layout problem. For example, it's it's the, the same. You can think of it a problem like this, which if it's going to be easier for you, imagine. Um, I'm, you, you go to a country uh, which you do not have a map of, okay, and somebody tells you pairwise distances between cities, okay. For example, somebody comes to Turkey says that, okay, between Ankara and Bursa it's 300 kilometers, Istanbul and uh, Ankara it's uh, 400 kilometers, for example. You have these pairwise distances between cities. Now, if you have a list of pairwise distances, can you draw a map of the, can you put all these cities onto the map uh, which is going to respect these pairwise distances? How can you embed these cities on a two-dimensional plane so that the pairwise distances I, you, you satisfy the pairwise distances I give, gave you in the middle? Okay, so for example, when you are doing this, uh, it, will, it will not be very easy. Okay, if, if you, uh, you put two cities together, the third city you are going to put together, you are going to satisfy all these pairwise distance constraints. And sometimes such an embedding may not be possible in a two-dimensional plane. Maybe if these were uh, three-dimensional points, they're three-dimensional locations, it, was, it may be impossible to satisfy pairwise distance constraints on a 2D plane. But since we are considering cities, now you can consider Earth as flat <laughs> if you, uh, and yeah, you'll, you will uh, satisfy the, these constraints. So, in other words, in terms of cities, we can, we can embed them on a two-dimensional plane because the distance we measure is a Euclidean distance and it's a metric. If we have metric distances, this, this, this problem, I mean, if these distances they, corresponds to, they correspond to distances between um, points in plane, for example, Euclidean distances. You can always draw a tree or you can always put them, uh, put on, on a global map, 
they put, put them to, uni to some positions on a global map and show a global relationship between all these points if we have metric distances. However, sometimes the distance matrix we have here may not be a metric, meaning that it may not satisfy certain uh, constraints about this. For example, it may not even be symmetric. It may not satisfy triangular inequality, um, like the uh, sequence alignment uh, that we are using. Pa lo local sequence alignment. Consider local sequence alignment. Local sequ sequence alignment scores. If I give you five sequences, you compute local sequence alignment scores between them. Uh, those local sequence alignment scores are not a metric. They are not going to satisfy, uh, for example, uh, triangular inequality or uh, me meaning that imagine you have, a, uh, you have two sequences. Yeah, let's imagine we have uh, three sequences. This part. Uh, and I'm going to have now okay the distinction between those two are not very clear so I'm going to use something else so I have three sequences A, B, C and I compute sequence similarity scores. So sequence B is similar to sequence A. Sequence B is also similar to sequence C. But this doesn't imply that sequence A is also similar to sequence uh, C. Okay. So here, if you use, in, in terms of distances, in terms of metric distances, uh, if you are very close to a city, I mean, the triangular inequality means that the distance between, I mean, the distance you need to satisfy certain constraints. If you are close to two cities, if you are very close to two cities, even if those two, the, the, the other two cities cannot be very far from each other. If you are close to both of them, the other two cities, even, even if you are on a line, that's the, the, there's a certain maximum distance between those two city, cities. If you are the city in the middle, the cities A and C, can uh, be as far as uh, the the total uh, the total distance between those cities. It cannot be f they cannot be far away from that total distance. However, here in terms of sequence similarity, we see that sequence similarity scores can violate this distance matrix distance. Uh, these B is close to A and C. However, A and C are completely unrelated, meaning that if if you are putting them on a tree. Putting A and C together in its closed branches will be meaning will be wrong, will be incorrect. You will not satisfy the distance constraint. So the problem is very difficult if you do not have metric distances. The decision problem is: uh, Can you have a tree that satisfies these distances? Uh, sometimes you will not have, you will not be able to draw trees that uh, to, uh, that obtain that give you the exact distances in your matrix. Uh, so, and this, this problem is actually an MP complete problem, meaning that, okay, if you, cannot, if you cannot have the exact tree, then find me a tree which minimizes the distance between your distance matrix and uh, your path distance matrix, okay? You are going to have path distances coming from the tree, and you are going to have this distance matrix. Your goal is to make these two distances as close as possible. And this problem is MP complete. In other words, you, can, uh, you, can, you need to try all possible trees with all possible weights uh, to find. And uh, there is no polynomial time efficient solution, um, known solution right now, uh, to minimize this uh, distance between the path distances in the tree and this uh, distance. Uh, in the, given in the distance matrix. So what we have, if, if we cannot solve it exactly, we usually have heuristics. So neighbor joining algorithm and UPGM algorithms are such heuristics. They just, they cannot guarantee optimal solutions when our distances are not uh, 
matrix they uh, matrix where our distances does not set distances that do not satisfy certain constraints but they provide you uh, good uh, satisfactory results uh, for many cases so we are going to uh, see uh, the UPGM algorithm uh, is a much easier algorithm than neighbor joining then therefore I'm going to talk about that uh, today as distance measures we can use different things percent identities we can use similarity scores and here is an example tree and, and this is an additive matrix meaning that it satisfies these constraints the triangular inequality symmetry everything is so it's a, it's a distance matrix uh, uh, here this if we have such a distance which which is additive meaning additive distance is like a Euclidean distance it's a, it's a matrix uh, if it uh, satisfies these uh, constraints we can always draw a tree which correspond to uh, the distances here if you if, if you can see if you look at the path distance between A and E uh, it is 7 so the distance between A and E is 7 the path distance between D and E if you look at that 5.5, 2.5, it's 8, 11, 12. Yeah, D and E, it's 12. So if you just compute every path distance between every pair of leaf nodes in this tree, you are going to get the values given in your distance matrix. Okay, so this is a solution to this puzzle given this distance matrix. If you have this tree, you are going to have the exact same this pairwise distances indicated as path distances in this tree. Now, uh, how, are, how can we uh, draw such a tree? Uh, if, if you have additive distances, I'm just going to go over this simple algorithm. This is not neighbor joining. If, it's, if you are sure that your matrix is additive, if you are sure that you are given uh, a distance metric, uh, it's like Euclidean distance, uh, you can use this short, uh, you can use this algorithm to actually construct a tree like this. This algorithm is simple. First, you need to verify that your distance matrix is additive by checking these constraints. Okay? It's, it has to be a metric uh, distance. Uh, you need, it has to be symmetric. Triangular inequality should hold. Triangular inequality means that the distance between, uh, so it's, it's this. So C need to be greater than A minus B, uh, right? So this is the uh, triangular inequality. The distance C should be greater than A minus B. And the distance should be zero only if two species are equal. Different species should not uh, have zero distance. And the distance also always has to be positive, okay? So these, are the, these constraints make it uh, metric. If after you check that, you just choose a pair of objects randomly. Uh, this is going to be your first path in the tree. Just uh, put randomly. And choose a third object and establish the linear equal equations to let the object branch off the path. So what it means, okay, is this. Let me just run that on this example. Uh, let's, let's try to construct a, a tree for this one. Just choose randomly two objects. Yeah, you choose. <laughs> Just give me any a, a, B, C, D, E. Just two of them. Choose two of them. C and D. Okay. Let's choose C and D. What is the distance between them? Uh, C and D, it's six. So this is your first branch in the tree. Now you choose a random third object. Choose one of them. A. So we choose A. And we are going to let A branch off this path. Now, here are the unknowns. After we, if we do this, okay, the total branch length was six. Right now, I need to determine, okay, I'm going to have this A branch of this path, but where, 
Okay, where is it going to branch off? And what is the length of this branch? So there are three unknowns here. Okay, X, Y, Z. If I let this A branch off this path, I need to determine these uh, three values. What I know is that X plus Y is six. I know that was six. X plus Z is what? The distance between A and C, uh, 12. And Z plus Y, I also know that. Z plus Y is the distance between A and D. The distance between A and D was eight. So these are my system of linear equations. Three equations, three unknowns, so you can find X, Y, Z. If we solve this, if you multiply this with minus one, it's going to be z minus y is going to be equal to six, right? I would just multiply this with minus five. It's going to be z minus y, 12 minus six is going to be six. Uh, two z is equal to 14. So z is equal to seven, okay? z is equal to 7. If it's equal to 7, x plus c, what was that between c and a? c and a it was 12, right? So it's going to be 5. This is, this is going to be 5. This is going to be 1. Okay, after solving your first system of linear equations, this is how your tree looks like. Now the algorithm states that uh, now, after, at the, after that point, choose a pair of leaves in the tree constructed so far and compute the... Actually, uh, we, we did that, okay. <laughs> uh, now, if after this, sometimes after this system of linear equations, sometimes we may find that our branching point may not be somewhere in the middle of a branch, okay. Sometimes if the... Uh, so if, if the new path branches off an edge in the tree, if we branch off on an existing edge in the middle of an edge in the tree, then we are done. There is no problem. But if this new path branches off an existing node in the tree, meaning that imagine I'm going to branch off another thing here. I just again choose C and D randomly, and I'm going to branch off, for example, uh, B. I'm going to find where B branches off. And if you find that this point is actually this node here, then we need to do the branching again, okay? Uh, uh, we need to uh, in, do, do the insertion step once more by choosing, uh, in, we do not choose C and D to put B, we choose another pair. We just, uh, the C and D is not, does not provide, a, provide us enough information to put a, to, to, sell, to tell us where B is going to be put, we choose another pair uh, until we branch off uh, somewhere in the middle of an edge, okay? We continue, if, if we found that, if, if we find that we branch off an existing node like this, intermediate node like this in the tree, we just uh, do not do the insertion, we choose another pair and do the insertion once more. So let's actually, we have just two objects. Let's do this and let's uh, finish it today. Okay, we already have an example, but, let, but let's do it here. So A, B, C, A, A, D, C is put. Now let's try B. Okay, let's try to put B on this path. Okay, let's try to put B on this path. Let's, let's see where it's going to be. For example, I put it here, okay? Now, if you put B here, again, we are going to determine three things. So this was seven. It's going to be X, uh, Y, and this is going to be Z. Okay, now, X plus Y is equal to the distance between A and B, it's 10. X plus uh, Z was the distance between A and D. I already knew, know that. So this, this is X plus Z, uh, it was eight. And Y plus Z is the distance between B and D, which is 
4. Okay? Now, uh, let's multiply this with minus 1. It's going to be uh, x minus y is equal to 4. x minus y is equal to 4. Uh, it's going to be 2x is equal to 14. x is equal to 7. Right? Uh, x is equal to 7. So x was this. Uh, and uh, here we see that x is 7 means that this branch actually, this, I put it here, this, this, this length was 7. Okay? It means that x is 7 means that this branch is actually right here. Okay? Now uh, here b branched off here, which we do not want branching off an existing node. So we, we are not going to choose a and d. We are going to choose another pair of uh, nodes to insert B. Again, for example, choose C and D. Okay, this is seven. Choose C and D to insert uh, B. So, for example, let's assume I'm going to insert it here. So this whole length was one. Uh, okay, x, uh, I'm going to determine uh, this y, and I need to also uh, determine this part, right? So, okay, it was, no, 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 I'm going, it was going to be c and d, it, it, these are the three things that are unknown. Okay, x, y, and z. Uh, x plus y is equal to 4. B, D was 4. Uh, x plus z is equal to B and C. Uh, it's again 4. x plus, sorry, uh, c, z plus y was C and D, it was 6. Uh, again, if you multiply this one with minus 1, it's going to be Y minus X is going to be equal to 2, right? Y minus X is going to be equal to, so let's see if you multiply this with minus 1, y minus, yeah, y minus x is going to be equal to 2. 2y two is going to be 6. y is equal to 3. So y is equal to 3 means that, now we are in a safe position, y is equal to 3 means that actually the position of this branch was not to the right of this uh, point, but it was to the left of this point because the length of this one was 1. So I'm going to have it like this. So this was not proportional, but this, this distance is 1, this distance is, uh, so uh, where, where was y? So let's, let's branch here, okay? This was uh, b, okay, this was uh, the distance, uh, okay, z was the complete one, I think, this was y, so y is 3 means that this is going to be 2, uh, okay, 2, 1, and the distance is, if x plus y, uh, and this is going to be 1, okay, this is 2, this is 1, uh, the distance between c and d was, and this is going to be 3, okay, so it becomes like this. This branch length is 3, this is 2, this is 1, this is 1, and if we look at this, the distance between B and D is 4, C and D is 6, and B and C is also 6. No, it's 4. Okay, 3 plus 1 is going to be 4, so it satisfies all these things. Okay, so here, after choosing another pair, we were able to insert this in the tree. So we continue doing this, uh, the same, doing the same thing for the uh, E. We are going to choose any pair in this uh, tree and we are going to insert it uh, in the tree uh, by using the same system of linear equations. 
Um, we are going to continue with the UPGMA. UPGMA is going to take like 15 minutes uh, to cover. Uh, it's a very simple algorithm. It's just choose the minimum distance node, combine them, then choose the next minimum distance node, combine them, do this combination until you have one node left, okay? Uh, the only thing that we need to de determine is that after we combine these two nodes into a group, how do we update uh, here in our distance matrix, it goes like this. After we choose to combine, for example, B and C, uh, we are going to remove them from the distance matrix. We are going to insert the group BC into the matrix. Now it becomes, if you have a group in the matrix, how do you update, how do you find the distance of a group to a node? Or how do you define, find the distance between two groups? And in UPGMA, this is just the average distance uh, between group members. This is how they define it. So therefore, it's very easy to update the distance matrix we are going to see. And we are going to choose the next minimum one in this matrix until we have just one entry in the matrix. The algorithm is that simple. I'm going to con uh, talk about it in the beginning of our lecture next uh, Thursday. And we are going to start protein structures after that. Okay, so that's it for today. See you next week.